Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make some simple leather knife sheaths. These knife sheaths are simple, pretty quick to make and pretty effective and I think they look quite nice as well. As you can see, with using this method I've made three different knife sheaths and I've made them in a variety of different sized knives, all the way down from a very very small knife to a very large bowie knife that I've made. So these are the three different knives which I'm going to be making the sheets for. The smallest one is a little drill bit knife which I forged from a drill bit and is very sharp and I very much like it and need a sheath for it. The next biggest one is a Damascus steel blade blank that then someone made the handle for and then gave to me which is also a very nice knife and it needs a sheath so that I can use it properly. And then the biggest one is a large bowie knife which I made in a previous tutorial from a farrier's rasp. So enjoy the tutorial and have fun watching how to make a leather knife sheath. So I've got the three knives which I need to make the knife sheath for and I've also got the leather and the leather is probably the most important piece since it's going to be the main resource which you're going to be using for making the knife sheath and this is some 2mm thick two link cowhide leather that I bought for £14 off of Amazon and you may think that's quite expensive but it was actually easily enough leather to make three good knife sheaths out of. Then as a little test I'm going to make the knife sheath first for the smallest knife and that's going to be my test I'm not going to make the tutorial on that and then I'll make the tutorial on the second two knife sheaths. So this is what the first knife sheath looks like after I've made it and I've just made it as a friction fit see it's got no fastenings it's just held on by wet forming the leather around the knife and then it conforms around the handle and it means that it's hard to pull out and then it's hard to push in but once it's in it like clips around it holds it in place. For these two knives I'm going to have to do it slightly differently because you won't be able to do that for these since the handle becomes so much wider and you'd have to make it about this long to make it a knife sheath like this. So what I'm going to do for these ones is I'm going to have some sort of clip fastening that comes around and clips them shut. So first I need to decide on the shape of the knife sheath and it's just going to conform around the shape of the blade and to mark that out I need to lay the knife down on a piece of paper then start to fold the paper around the blade and the handle so that I get a sort of rough shape of how large the knife sheath is going to be and how much leather I'm going to have to use. This is what it looks like once I've finished making the design and this is just the blank of it and the front bit of the blade will just fold around it like this, fit over the blade and I'll maybe adjust the shape at the front here and then this back bit will sit like this. This will be the clip that will come over and clip on holding the knife sheath in place and then this back piece here will fold over again to make the belt loop. Now I'm going to transfer the design onto the leather trying to conserve as much of the leather as possible since it's quite expensive. Once it's been drawn on cut it out with a decent pair of scissors. So this is what the leather looks like after I've cut it out and as you can see it will just go in like this. This bit will fold over and go over the knife and also the knife clip is easily enough to come up like this and it's long enough to reach. To make these things easier to bend I'm going to be using my leather tool here which I bought off Amazon and I'm just going to be cutting a groove in here part the way through the leather and the same two here so that it can bend around this corner here. This leather tool was only a couple of pounds, it was much cheaper than the leather itself, it's a pretty cheap one, you can get much more expensive ones but you don't need it for a simple project like this. You don't need it, it's not necessarily required, but it does make the project a lot easier and it can make it look a lot nicer. Now using the groove cutter part, all of the different grooves have been cut in areas where the knife sheath needs to be folded, so it'll fold in those areas much easier since it's much thinner leather there. So it'll fold there, it'll fold there around that bit and it'll fold on this bit to form the belt loop. Now I'm going to use this tool here with just the flat end in and this all comes in the kit and I'm going to use it to score a line all the way around the leather which is just going to hopefully improve the aesthetics a little bit. After I've done that, it looks pretty cool with the line going all the way around the outside. Now using this rounding tool, I'm going to round all of the edges of the leather just to give it a nice rounded look. After that, the leather knife sheath looks pretty cool. So now it's time to wet form the knife sheath and to do that it's very simple, all you need to do is heat it up in hot water. The hotter the water the harder the knife sheath that is going to become, pretty much like that. So I'm just going to be using hot water from my tap. Once the water's become warm you can literally just put the leather underneath and soak it in for a couple of minutes. 
Now, as you can see, the leather is really, really soft and it folds very easily. So now bring it over to your workstation and I've wrapped my knife in some cling film that is just going to help protect it from the water since there's carbon steel and it will rust and the wood might absorb some of the water. So then you can just put the knife in the sheath like you want it to be and start to fold it over in all of the areas that need to be folded like this. I'm then going to leave the knife like this until it dries. So this is what the knife sheath looks like after that and as you can see it fits around the knife pretty well and all of the different bits are held in place and they sort of spring back and want to go into this shape and it fits around the knife really well and it almost pretty much holds itself on just like this so it fits the knife really well. And as you can see the back loop has been formed and this belt clasp, the clasp thing here has also been formed and it fits around the blade very nicely. The next step is to create a middle piece of material like this which you can then sew it onto and then that's going to create a thickness which is going to be hopefully a similar thickness to the knife so that it means that it will protect the front of the blade from being able to push out like that. To do that I first need to trace this design onto a piece of paper. I can then place the knife over the design and then draw on where the blade goes if I place it right at the back. I can then cut out this design and then I can trace it onto a piece of leather. Once you've traced it onto the leather you can cut it out and then you should be able to compare it to the knife blade and as you can see the knife blade can fit just inside it like this and it fits quite comfortably and snugly. Also even when the knife is inside the sheath you should be able to fit it up against it just to double check the fit and like this then you can push it up against it and just check that it fits. Once it's in position I'm going to make sure that it holds in position before I glue it just using these little clumps like this. These are just very weak. You could pretty much use anything to hold it in place as long as it squeezes the leather together. Make sure that also when you do this that the leather isn't wet at all because if the leather is wet and you put a dent in it that dent will stay there forever. Now while the middle piece is being held in place I'm going to use a dab of super glue just all the way along. Just tiny pieces to tack it in place and this super glue isn't ideal because it's not very flexible and it will crack. A better glue would be maybe contact adhesive or some sort of flexible epoxy but this is going to be used simply because it dries very quickly and I want to get this knife sheath finished and I'm only going to be tacking it in place and then when I do the actual stitching that will hold the in a piece in place properly. Once the glue is set, this is held in place very firmly, even though it's only by a couple of little pieces of super glue. And then I can push the knife in and it is held in place quite securely. Using this nail, I'm gonna make a little tool which is gonna help me to mark out where I wanna make all of the holes quite evenly. So this is the crude little tool that I've made and I've just made it from a nail and basically what you can do is you can just hammer it in like this and it'll leave a mark. You can then take it out and turn it over and then hammer it in again and carry on doing that and it'll make even marks all the way along that I can then drill holes in and that'll mean that all of the holes are evenly spaced. Instead of doing this you could probably just use a ruler but oh well. Now all of these holes have been punched, I've just, they're just shallow marks in the leather then all the way through. I now need to drill holes all the way through where I can stitch through because I can't just go straight through the needle because the leather is very tough. If you have a punch like this that the holes go small enough on then you can use one but this leather punch the holes only go to this size which is pretty large and too large for what I want. So I'm going to be using a 1.5mm drill bit which is the smallest one that I've got and then I'm just going to be drilling through. You need to be careful when drilling leather that you're holding it very firm because occasionally especially if you're using a larger drill bit with too slow a speed the drill bit can catch the leather and start to spin it round and you don't want to get your fingers caught. After all of the holes are drilled it looks pretty good and they're all in the right place and they're all nice and even thanks to my new tool. I can then clamp it up in my vise and use a sharp blade to just remove the excess material on the middle piece.
So this is what the knife sheath looks like at this stage in the process and I've got the edge all flattened out and pretty smooth. I've also recurved it again using the leather tool. Now it's time to sew up all of the holes and to do that I'm just going to be using a thin needle if I can pick it up that is so thin it will easily fit through these holes uh, but it's thick enough for me to be able to thread this thread in. This is just some thick black thread which I'm going to be using. You can pretty much use whatever you want. And if you want it to be really authentic, you could use some very thin strips of leather. So first what I need to do is just take a big strip of this, much more than I need because there's much more than I'll ever use on this big roll, no matter how many knife sheaths I make. Then I can thread it through the needle. First time. Then on this end, I need to tie a consecutive number of knots, which is just going to overlap and make the thread too thick to fit through the hole on this end. Once that's tied, this will not fit through the hole, and then I can take my needle and thread it through the first hole like this. You can then pull the string tight up to the knot. And as you can see, it just pushes against the hole and gets stuck. For the stitching, I'm using a very simple stitch where I simply go backwards and forwards and I make sure that I join up every single hole. So I go through one and then back through the one that I've already gone through, meaning there's two bits of the cord going through every single hole. And that just means that it's a very strong stitch and it also looks much nicer if you don't miss out any of the holes. So the way this stitch is working, it means that in between every single hole there's some thread going between them, which I think looks much nicer than if it's just going every other hole if you just go in then out then in then out all the way down. You can pretty much use any stitch you want, this is just my way of doing it. So this is what the stitching looks like once I've finished it, and I think it looks pretty good. It's going all the way up and all the way down. Once I've finished it, I can then go back to the start point, and I've already cinched the end point, and what I want to do is cut it off, then lightly burn it with a lighter. And now that's been flattened down, that's never coming undone and it won't be able to pull out the other side. Once that's done, the knife can fit in like this and I think it looks pretty good. It's held in pretty firmly by friction, but then it'll be held in even more strongly once this bit's made. The same method for sewing needs to be done on the belt loop here. I'm just going to sew this bottom bit here by drilling holes in it and then putting some thread along it. Then that will form this into a loop that can't come undone like this. Once that's been done, the belt loop is complete and I think that the stitching looks pretty good. So now I need to make the clip bit which is going to clip on like this. The easiest way to do this would probably to be just to use a button clip, which is just a simple push button that you're just going to push in like that, just like you have on sheets or something. Unfortunately, I don't have any of these button clips which I was talking about earlier. However, you can use just a simple 9 volt battery if you carefully break off these two end bits like this. It can actually form quite a nice button, but it's quite hard to attach and I don't think it looks very good. For more convenience, I think what I'm going to use in the end is neodymium magnets, which you can just find pretty much anywhere in order off the internet. If I punch a hole that's just the right size, then the magnet fits in pretty snugly, and then I can secure that with super glue and have the same on the other bit, and then push them together, and they'll connect like that, and then clip like that. Because the knife is held in pretty well, just like this. I mean, it takes a little bit of effort to actually pull it out, so I think these magnets will easily hold it in place fully. This is what it looks like once the two clips have been finished, and you can just put the knife in like this, and then it just clips on like that, and that will hold the knife in place, even if you try and slide it out, it can't go past this bit takes quite a lot of force to actually pull it out completely and it means also if you forget the clip there and you try and pull it out it's not going to break the leather knife sheath and you can put the knife back in and the clip automatically just seals itself now I'm just going to secure the magnets in place with a bit of glue ideally if you were going to be using this knife for a lot of carrying on your belt and you were doing a lot of running and stuff like that you would really want it to be much more secure than this but since I'm never really going to attach this on my belt since I never really wear a belt and I also never carry a knife as large as this or any knife really then I don't mind it just being held in place by this magnet since this knife sheath is only really going to be held in place like this it's not going to fall off and it's fine for me if you're going to use this as a belt knife on your belt then you're going to want a much more secure system of holding it in place otherwise it might fall out and you might lose it 
So this knife sheath for the second knife is pretty much finished. I'm now going to move on to making the largest knife sheath, just using pretty much the exact same method. So I'll just go through it with some time lapse video. I'm not going to go into any depth really. So this is what the largest knife sheath looks like once I've finished it and I think it looks pretty good. It's very simple but I quite like the design and it fits really well onto the knife like this. It doesn't have any fastening technique simply because it's basically just like a sleeve that's going to go over the knife, protect the blade and protect someone from getting cut on it. And obviously it doesn't come off even when you shake the knife very hard. This is all of the three different knife sheaths compared together and I think they look pretty good. I like all of them but I probably like this one the most and I think this one turned out best. Obviously this isn't the only method that you can use for making a knife sheath and there's loads of other different ways that you can do it and this is just the method that I've came up with and only for my first three attempts and I'm sure I'll probably change it in the future. But thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have please hit the like button down below and subscribe and good luck if you do try and make your own knife sheath.